Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahakwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a lesson on something I've been meditating on. All right, this scripture here in Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, and the 19th verse. All right, I'll go ahead and read it. All right, and this is uh, Moses, all right, whom the Heavenly Father used, you know, as a vessel along with his brother Aaron and other leaders to pretty much be at the forefront, all right, of leading our people out of Egypt, you see. And when you read at the very beginning of this, uh, chapter you know is dealing with us being you know restored you know because there is a promised restoration you know when you deal with the scriptures you have to understand let's get it in the book of Ephesians the uh, first chapter <clears throat> and the third verse it says blessed be the, all right the power and father of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Hamashiach, according as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. All right. Before the world was created, you have to understand, you know, the heavenly father, you know, created all of the chosen spirits, all of the Israelites, but amongst Israel, you know, you have the elect body who are ultimately chose to be the first fruits, all right, of creation under, all right, the first fruit himself, all right, the first spirit created, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, okay, and ultimately this body was chosen, all right, to always be at the forefront of life, all right, and when everything is reestablished, the first fruits, Let's get first Corinthians the fifteenth chapter. First Corinthians fifteen and twenty, the order of resurrection, but now is Hamashiach risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, which is Adam, by man, all right, the second Adam, came also the resurrection of the dead. See? And the, our resurrection process starts with us receiving the Holy Spirit. All right. For as in Adam all die, so in Hamashiach Yahawashai shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Hamashiach the first fruits, all right, which is Yahawashai and the 144,000. Afterward, they are that are Yahawashai at his coming. All right. The large multitude. And then come at the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to the most high God, Yahweh, even the father. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power for him, he must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet. And he asks the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, which we're in a situation where we're witnessing, you know, a big, uh, <laughs> a large amount of death as it's being presented to us. And shown unto us for a purpose. Now, dealing with the first fruits, all right, they were already chosen from the foundation of the world, all right? But as we know, this is the Heavenly Father's movie through Yahweh Shai, his word. So things have to play out. So within the movie, all right, we are given choices. Although we understand man's goings are of the Lord, there is still a movie written, all right? Just as you go to the movies and you watch a movie, all right, the uh, writer of that movie, he's not watching the movie in suspense. <laughs> he already knows which character is going to do what or has already played out, all right, in a uh, form of the script, all right? Well, ultimately, the Heavenly Father has ordained all things in a volume of the book, you see? So we... The elect, Lord willing, where of that number have been chosen from the foundation of the world before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. 
all right meaning ultimately we're going to make decisions that are based upon life having predestinated us to the adoption of children by Yahweh Shai Hamashiach him to himself according to the good pleasure of his will all right so when we deal with the understanding of prophecy we know that in the latter days a remnant all right are going to return to the heavenly father all right and um let's get isaiah 10 <clears throat> we always get this isaiah 10 and 20 and it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of israel and such as are escaped of the house of jacob shall no more again stay or rely or lean on or trust upon him that smote them the edomites our enemy but shall stay upon Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel in truth. All right. And the elect are coming to some very, very important realizations here in these latter days as we look at this big heap of death that's being presented to us. All right. The Lord has also given us the understanding of life. OK, so the elect, the remnant are no longer going to trust in this devil. The remnant shall return, even a remnant. All right. Unto the mighty power, the remnant of Jacob, for though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. All right. The first resurrection. All right. Where the elect spirits, the first fruits will be what resurrected back to life so that the tree may live. And it all starts with us receiving his word in these latter days. The consumption decree shall overflow with righteousness. All right. So as we go back here to Deuteronomy. 30 and 1 it says and it shall come to pass when all these things are come because ultimately we 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 were chosen from the foundation of the earth all right but we were called here but we don't know if we're chosen we won't know until ultimately we're on that chariot okay let's see here this is um Matthew 22 and 14 for many are called, but few are chosen. So there's even a whole hell of a lot of Israelites who know that they're Israelites, but of that number, only few are chosen. All right. So right now we understand that we've been called, but we don't know if we're chosen. All right. So we have to make sure that we direct our steps aright and choose life as the scriptures say. Where the fear of the Lord is present, it driveth away sins. And we want to be in a position to where we offend less in these times. So this is Deuteronomy 30 and 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things are upon thee. And you have to understand the book of Deuteronomy is the reintroduction of the covenant to the generation. All right. That pretty much was going to enter into the promised land after that wicked generation fell off. All right. And they fell off because of unbelief, hard heartedness and wickedness, even though they were being fed with manna, even though all of these miracles would happen, even though it was an angel above them. All right. You know, uh, you know, dealing with Moses, Aaron, the priest, you know, to uh, mediate and deal with Israel. They still did not listen. So the Lord killed off a whole generation of Israelites and the next generation, all right, that was to enter into the promised land, pretty much in the book of Deuteronomy, all right, the uh, covenant was reintroduced. That's why it's called Deuteronomy, which means the second time. All right, well, here in these latter days, all right, the new covenant, all right, has been introduced unto us, all right, through the Holy Spirit, we know and understand what, you know, uh, has been promised as a matter of fact, let's get that. I believe that's Ephesians 1 as well. All right, Ephesians, the first chapter. And in, in 11, same chapter we uh, went to earlier. Ephesians 1 and 11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. All right. Of his own will. All right. And within his own will, 
we each are going to be in particular situations. All right. That are going to, you know, <laughs> you know, that's not going to be it's not going to look likely that we're going to get out of it. And we're still going to have to trust. It's not going to be fair. All right. And within that, we're going to have to choose life. All right. That's what I'm going to get into. It says that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Hamashiach. See those first fruit spirits first trusted in Hamashiach, which the original order was given in the heavens from the foundation of the earth. All right. Under Yahweh Shah to create. All right. Uh, creation as we know it, the heavens, the earth, the sun, the moon, you know, the everything else, you know, um, that was created for the purpose of Yahweh Shai and his men ruling, all right, and having dominion over on earth, all right, but we came to the earth and we fell, which is why we're in this damned situation, but it was all according to his will as well that we fell. Anyway, in whom ye also trusted, all right, that after ye heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom um, also after that ye believe, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, sealed with the holy spirit of promise which is the earnest which when you go into that word earnest is basically like a down payment a foretaste of the future future glory we have that now through the understanding all right which was given unto us through the holy spirit we understand what is to come the new bodies the kingdom ruling over the heathen clean air clean water the animals not killing one another animals not attacking all right uh us you know animals you know eating off the land all of these things all right, are a part of the, 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 the promise. So we were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance. That is a part of life. All right, that is the, the, uh, the life, a part of the life we've been given. All right, is the earnest. Okay. Arabon is the Greek word. Earnest. Money, which is purchase which in purchase is given as a pledge or down payment that the full amount will be subsequently paid, which the Holy Spirit was, a uh, you know, the blood of Yahweh Shai, though it fills all things for us. All right. There's facets to it. There's there's uh, different aspects to it. You know, the, the receiving of the Holy Spirit, you know, which is why the uh, veil in the temple rent, you know, access back to the father, you know, and when he returns, that blood will be used as a covering, all right, to get us into the chariot. Just like in Egypt, the blood was used that the wrath, all right, the judgment, the plagues didn't touch any of those who had the blood over their doorposts, all right? And then eventually we were exodus out of Egypt and entered into that first covenant. So the money which per in purchases is given as a pledge or down payment that the full amount will be subsequently paid. All right. And going here, as we always go into. Um, let's see here. For the gift of the Holy Spirit, comprising as it does, is both a foretaste and a pledge of future blessedness. All right. A foretaste. Let's look up this word foretaste. It's an appetizer, basically. OK. And when it's all said and done, we'll have the fullness of it because we'll be in the new covenant fully. We'll have the law, statutes and commandments written in our inward part. All right. A small anticipatory sample an advance indication or warning uh, and so forth. You can look the word up if somebody want to you know, look it up and they find something that will be beneficial to the believers. Put it on the comment board. But a foretaste and a pledge of future blessedness. OK, so when we who are of the elect, Lord willing, heard this gospel, because, again, many are called, but few are chosen. Some hear it and it's not mingled with faith. But those who are of the elect, who were for chosen from the beginning, from the foundation of the earth. After ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And, and also after that, ye believe ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. OK, so understanding the promise, understanding what's coming is going to lead you to continue in a faith and make choices based upon life. Although we're going to fall. OK, at times we're coming into the times where 
Hey, the Lord is going to put a cold spirit on us to make some very, very important decisions because pretty much the whole nation, all right, lies upon Yahweh Shai's sacrifice and also the sacrifice of the elect under his sacrifice, the elect who are making their bodies a living sacrifice. And we have to understand these bodies weren't given unto us, all right, for our own earthly pleasure. These bodies were given to us to please Yahweh Bashim Yahushai and fulfill a very, very important role in prophecy. All right. So the Holy Spirit of promise is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. See, the full redemption when we're redeemed out of captivity unto the praise of his glory. All right. Let's get one more. I believe it's Ephesians, the uh, fourth chapter, and then we'll get on with the lesson. <clears throat> Ephesians, the fourth chapter and. 30 and grieve not the Holy Spirit doubting all right uh, becoming proud those are ways to grieve the Holy Spirit all right whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption see we haven't been redeemed yet but the the uh, the start of our uh, redemption is when we receive this word let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speak and be put away from you with all mad malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as the Most High for Yahweh Shai's sake have forgiven you. All right. And we need forgiveness. All right. So when you deal with this uh, chapter, Moses says here. All right. Um, so there's a restoration promised. All right. So within that, Moses says this. All right. Because when you read it, I'll read a little bit of it. Deuteronomy 30 and 1, it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, all right, which we, you know, experience the blessings under Solomon, all right, and now ultimately here in these latter days, we've, you know, we're fulfilling the curse. Now we understand why we're at the bottom. We understand, you know, what happened to us as a nation, you know, the, our history, all right, which I have set before thee that thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Lord God have driven thee. All right. Again, the Gentiles who were scattered among the nations would turn back to the heavenly father and thou shalt return to the Lord thy God and shall obey, obey his voice. According to all that I commanded thee this day, thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion on thee and will return and gather thee from all nations, whither the Lord God have driven thee and scattered thee. All right. And bring us back into the land. So within this chapter. All right. Moses says this. Deuteronomy 30 and 15. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. OK, life and good and death and evil. All right. Life and good. All right. Because we have received what? All right. A foretaste of the glory. We understand that if we are obedient. All right. Which Yahweh Shai understood that. That's why he ultimately made the decision. All right. He made. All right. To be offered up as a sacrifice, though we know pursuant to Revelation, the 13th chapter, he was chosen for the foundation of the earth. All right. Um, let's get Revelation 13. Revelation, the 13th chapter. All right. So those things are already predestined. All right. There are souls chosen to come into the earth and fulfill. All right. The good. All right. Which comes as a sacrifice. All right. And it comes with a great reward. Revelation 13 and 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Worship who? Esau, Edom, whose names are not written in the book of life. And those who are written in the book of life will partake in the first resurrection, man, when we're resurrected back to our power to be at the forefront, all right, of all creation under Yahweh Shai, starting with the 144,000, the 12 disciples will be at the head of that, all right? So all that dwell of earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life, all right, of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So the lamb, Yahweh Shai, being slain and offering himself up as a sacrifice, all right. That was foreordained of the father before the foundation of the world. However, he had to come into the earth. 
All right. And life and death was set before him. See, and he chose life, which came with a price, which came with what? You know, hell in the flesh. There was even a point where Yahweh Shai asked the father, is there any other way we could do this? All right. And the heavenly father. All right. Was silent. All right. Meaning, oh, nope, this is it. This is what I have set before you. This is the path you must walk in. And Yahweh Shai did it. See, so Moses is telling us here. All right. See, I have set before you this day life and good and death and evil. And we have witnessed death. Look around you. This system. All right. Thrives on sin. It's evil It's wicked. Everything that you're witnessing as a result of sin, evil, wickedness, rebellion. That's what this world thrives on. He's shown you the corruptness. All right. And if you didn't think the so-called. All right. The W.H.I.T.E. man was the devil. Right. <laughs> if you didn't think he was the devil well, the Lord gave you all right from 2019 till now. OK, all of the, the articles and things brothers are showing you through the spirit, the things the Lord has allowed us to be open to. And if you choose him, if you choose death over life, if you choose evil over good, then you were never the heavenly fathers. But you have to understand that choosing life is going to come with a price. All right. That's why the book of Sirach says what you have to put on wisdom as fetters. All right. And chains about thy feet because it restricts you from doing particular things, which is not going to be easy. All right. And we're all going to be in situations that we don't want to be in where we're, you know, you're going to want to point the finger at someone. You're going to say this person should be doing this. That person should be doing that. But you yourself are going to have to choose life within any in every situation the Heavenly Father puts you in. OK. And that I command thee this day to love Yahweh thy power, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. All right. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land, whether thou goest possess it. And we're getting ready to be brought back to that land. See? It says, but if thine heart turn away. All right. So that thou will not hear. But shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whether thou passest over the Jordan to possess it. And here's the point. All right. I call heaven and earth to record this day that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. See? The Lord has pretty much showed us why we're in this position, the results of disobedience. He's showing us what we're going to get for obedience now. All right. He's given you all right, uh, more than enough to see that this world is evil. He's giving you teachers to show you the understanding of what the value of the book is all about through Yahweh Shai, might I add, because we would not have this understanding if it was not for what Yahweh Shai did on that cross. All right. Through that blood. The seals were unloosed and he now is on the right hand side of the heavenly father and able to send down the understanding to, to the minds of the elect. Starting with the men of the Lord to teach and understand this word, the new song will be sung. See, in the new song, pursuing the Psalms 40 and three, somebody can post it. All right. is going to lead to many trusting and fearing Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. So choose the life, all right, that both thou and thy seed mayest live. Now, let's get this in the NLT. I'll get some other scriptures. NLT says, today I have given you the choice between life and death. All right. Now, I remember someone, uh, those uh, life lesson weirdos, said, well, if free will exists, why is he saying choose life and death? All right. Well, the Heavenly Father, again. This is a, this is his movie. This is his script. It within it. All right. The Lord is going to give a right, particular souls a chance. All right. All right. To understand what happens as a result of judgment. All right. But again, the heavenly father puts it in particular people's minds to not listen. 
All right. That's in the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter. As a matter of fact, let's get that real quick. Let's get Matthew 13. This book is written. The truth of this book is written in a sense. All right. A way that it will keep people out. Certain stumbling blocks, all kind of things are written in this book. All right. This is Matthew 13. All right. And 10. And the disciples came to him and said, why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto me, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But unto them, it is not given. But whosoever hath to him shall it be given and he shall have more abundant. But whosoever have not from him shall it be taken even that he hath. Again, many are called, but not everyone is chosen. All right. So we want to make sure our decision. All right. Making and our our. You know, uh, again, we have to choose the spirit over the flesh, and that's going to be more challenging coming down this pipe as we're going to have to give up. All right. More of ourselves. We're going to have to give up comforts. We're going to have to what? All right. There's particular uh, uh, things written. All right. From the foundation of the earth for each believer. But we're going to have to bear it just like your Shai had to bear what was written for him to be that sacrifice. All right. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore, I speak to them in parables because they seeing see not and hearing hear not. Neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said by hearing ye shall hear and not understand and seeing ye shall see and not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes have they closed lest at any time they should see with their ears and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them. So the Lord don't want everybody to be healed and converted. Again, you have natural brew beast made to be taken. All right. Certain people were created within the gospel for the gospel's sake to be rebellious, to fall off and to be destroyed. Second Peter's two and 12. But these is natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption again man's goings are of the lord so those who ultimately are of the elect all right are going to be put in positions all right through hearing the word where they're going to choose life all right and others will eventually choose death because of bitterness persecution all right and ultimately, it's all going to come down to what's written in Revelation, the 12th chapter. All right. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. So, again, Moses is saying here today, I have given unto you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call to uh, now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. <laughs> oh, that you would choose life. So that you and your descendants shall live and the elect are going to choose life so that the whole tree can live. Yahweh Shai chose life so that the whole tree can live, although it came with suffering, pain, humiliation, betrayal. All right. And being put in a very, very difficult situation, which ultimately all of these things are a condition of the battle. All right. Because here in Second Edras, the uh, seventh chapter. Ezra's is pretty much being edified on emotions he's having as to why do we have to go through this? You know, he's basically like, why didn't you just create Adam to do right? You know why? You know, he's going through all of these emotions. He's he's he's, you know, going back and forth with this angel. All right. He getting rebuked. All right. But here he says in verse 48. Second Edra seven, O thou Adam, what hast thou done? Now we just read in Ephesians or First Corinthians, rather. We just read in First Corinthians the fifteenth chapter. All right. Let's read this in the NLT. First Corinthians fifteen and twenty one says so you see, just as death came into the earth, uh, into the world through a man, which is Adam. Now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man, which is Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai is known as the second Adam. See, the first man was earthy, 
the second man all right will be from the heavens all right melchizedek he's not going to need a genealogy on earth he will be born directly of the father that that body he had from the very beginning which that's what he asked the father all right in the first place all right in john the 17th chapter he said return me to the glory which i had with thee let's get that john 17 all right john the 17th chapter Seventeen and five, and now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Basically, I've done my job. Now, give me that glory I had with thee from the beginning, that heavenly body. All right, and when you go down here, all right, verse twenty-four. Let's put this in red letter. Father, I will that they also to whom thou hast given me. Be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me from the foundation of the world. So he wants us to be brought back to that estate as well under him. But just as he had to go through a process of choosing life, because as Adam, all right, we know uh, he chose death eventually. As Solomon, we know that he chose death. All right. But as Hebrews, the, fi the uh, fifth chapter says, let's get that real quick. Hebrews, the fifth chapter, and let's see here. Hebrews 5 and 8, though he were a son, speaking of Yahweh Shai, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. All right, and we know that he was perfect as Yahweh Shai in that life. So why did he need to learn obedience? All right. <laughs> We have lessons on that, all right? Lord willing, you know, we'll reload them or you can ask if you need more edification. But pretty much, Yahweh Shai's walk was to learn obedience. Now, here we are. We have to go through the process of obedience. See? Giving up this life. Understanding why we're in this fallen estate. So he says here, O Adam, what hast thou done? Second Edra 7 and 48. For though it was thou that sinned, thou art not fallen alone, but we all that come of thee. All right. And that lineage is accounted through Seth. OK. Eventually through Enoch, through Noah, through Shem, through our Faxad. All right. Eber, Peleg, all the way up to Terah, all the way up to Abram. All right. Who the ways of righteousness were restored to for that righteous lineage. He had Isaac. All right. After the promise was given unto him, Isaac was the heir of the promise. That promise was passed unto Jacob. All right. And then you have the 12 tribes. All right. And ultimately, it would be of the lineage of Judah that the one who will redeem this chosen seed back to the father will come through. Our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. And through the understanding we've been given, we understand Adam's fall. We understand the mistakes our forefather made. Now, all right, under Yahweh Shai's example, we have to choose life. All right? Even if it hurts. All right? Understanding that that is our rites of passage to get back to that uh, uh, heavenly estate and to rule on earth as kings and priests with new bodies. So, as you keep reading down, All right. I mean, the whole thing is good. Man. Whew. Let's see here. Let's just jump to the point. Because he's complaining that ultimately we had to undergo this fall. All right. Because through Adam's fall, we all fell. We all had the taste of death. But through Yahweh Shai's life, we all now have a chance back at life, starting with the first fruit spirits. Then answered he me and said, this is the condition of the battle which man that is born upon the earth may fight. OK, <laughs> this is the condition of the battle. So you have to understand all of these conditions that we're in. It's a condition of the battle. All right. Which the battle is the fight to get back to immortality. To get back to security, safety, 
to understand our offense. All right. That's why I always bring this out. In Psalms 119. So lock you. <clears throat> Psalms 119. And 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. See, the elect through this affliction, through this fall, now that we've heard the words of life, all right, we now understand the importance of life. We understand the importance of his statutes. Let's get this in the NLT. So we're using this, this crazy condition that we're in to understand the importance of life and appreciate what Yahweh Shai did for us, all right, so that we may get back in good graces with Yahweh Shai, all right? My suffering was good for me, for it taught me to pay attention to your decrees, you see? And the elect have come to that understanding that, all right, this suffering, you know, is good that the Lord did this. Now we understand and appreciate his story. It doesn't always feel good, all right, but through it all, we are now learning the importance of the law, statutes and commandments, the importance of order as we have been presented with a crazy situation that is merely a condition of the battle where we have witnessed death. All right. Compass the whole entire planet Earth. And the results of sin, the results of rebellion are right before our face. We're seeing a wicked ruler do all manner of evil, lie, deceive, cheat. Rape, rob, murder, lie, just devouring souls through rap music, entertainment. And the Lord has showed us more than enough. Look at the jab. You see, look at the people who chose that. See, the Lord has given us life and death. <laughs> and now we have to choose life fully so that we may live even unto death because with this understanding you understand death is not the end all be all all right and as things get crazy there's going to be thoughts in your head that you would rather sometimes be back in the spirit world but the heavenly father is going to keep certain spirits alive to be beamed up certain are going to be raised from the dead all right or already on the chariot when your returns whatever our plight is in this whole uh, uh story the heavenly father has written all right we counted all joy. All right. Again, this is a condition of the battle which man that is born up on the earth shall fight. See. Everything you go through, it's all a condition of the battle, the death you see, everything. It's a condition of the battle. Second Ezra, the fourth chapter explains that. Death had to play out in the earth so that the sons of God can understand the, uh, the, a great lesson. All right. Through through, you know, now we know death is not the way. All right. And he's given us more than enough, which we're getting ready to see more. All right. Of left hand practices and evil to know that ain't it. We, we ain't going to trust this guy. The, the serpent ain't the way. You know, following after the serpents, you know, uh, you know, gospel or doctrine is not the way to go. And many of our people haven't learned anything yet. But we've learned. So this is the condition of the battle which man is born upon the earth shall fight through the fall of Adam. This is the condition. This is it. All right. <laughs> Wickedness had to play out. That if he be overcome, he shall suffer as I said. But if he get the victory, he shall receive the things that I say. All right. So you don't want to over be overcome. By the bitterness, you know, by the, you know, the, uh thought of damn i have to give this life up or damn i'm gonna have to give up comforts now that the lord has shown you what this world is really all about what really are you giving up what really are you losing okay so th th this is the life whereof moses spake unto the people while he lived saying choose the life that thou mayest live nevertheless they believe not him nor yet the prophets after him nor me all right, which are spoken unto them, that therefore, that there should not be such heaviness in the destruction as be joy over them that are persuaded unto salvation. See, so this is 
the uh, condition of the battle. All right. That you have to choose life. And if you be overcome, you shall suffer. See, and this is why the scriptures talks about the bitterness. In the book of Hebrews, I believe the uh, 12th chapter. See if we can pull that up. All right. Which read this whole chapter. All right. But. um, Let's see here. Hebrews 12 and 11. Now, no chastening for the present seem it joyous. All right. Because we're all going through a lesson. You have to understand everything you're going through right now is a checking, a, a, a chastening. All right. A, a chance for you to choose life. There's lessons in everything you're going through. All of us are being put in positions and are going to be put in positions. All right. To where we're going to have to choose life. All right. And how, how do you choose life? All right. Uh, ultimately asking the Lord first, you know, what, what do you want me to learn from this situation I'm in? All right. Praising the Lord, even when it's, it hurts, when, it, you, you, you know, not focusing on the bitterness that comes with it, because it's going to be bitter. All right. But then if you start to point fingers and start to say, well, this person did that, that person did this, then what? You're not focusing on the lesson that you're supposed to be learning. All right. And you're not growing. OK, we can all point the finger. We could all say this person should be doing this. I should, you know, I did this. I shouldn't. You know, we, we could all do that. Yahweh Shai could have did that. But what did he do? He learned obedience. All right. Through the death of the cross. See. Through giving up that life, not falling away from the order, the obedience, which both Adam and Solomon were given orders to be obedient. See. But in, in, in those lives, he fell. See, now, all right, as Yahweh Shai, what did he do? He, 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 what? He endured the chastening and he understood that I have a job to do. This is why this body was given unto me, right? And again, when you read Hebrews, the 11th chapter as well, all right, the triumphs of faith, all right, each of these individuals chose life. All right. And there's rewards. All right. Each of these individuals, this is a chapter full of our forefathers and certain uh, foremothers. All right. Who what? Who uh, uh, chose life. All right. Over death. Hey, think about Moses. He gave up being like a, 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 a billionaire in Egypt. All right. In today's, you know, standard, he, he gave up all of that to suffer with his people. He chose life. You see. All of these these people you read about. All right. Chose life. All right. And these are their examples. Just a few examples. All right. And all of their sacrifices were written and recorded for us to hear about and learn about and understand a way for us to walk as we are going to be put in some crazy situations. Right. So Hebrews 12 in, in, in 15 or Hebrews 12 and 11. Now, no chastening. All right. Let's look up this word chastening for the present seem it to be joyous. And we're all going. We're all in a situation where we could say, I don't want to be in this situation. I don't deserve this. You see. And yes, you do, because there's a lesson that you are to learn. All right. And a sacrifice that you are to offer up in that situation is going to lead to life. Pa. He dia, all right. The whole training and education of children, which relates to the cultivation of minds and morals, and employs for this purpose now commands and admonitions, admonishments, all right. Admonitions now reproof and punishment. It also includes the training and care of the body. See. Whatever in adults also cultivates the soul, especially by correcting mistakes and curbing passions. And we all walked in a particular way before we came in this truth. Now the Lord is putting us all in positions where we're being checked. And in each of your tribulations, there's there's life you have to choose. 
You have to choose life. You have to take the rebuke. You have to understand and ask the Lord, what am I supposed to get better at? What do you want me to learn from this? Instead of focusing on a hurt, instead of pointing fingers, instead of acting like you're perfect and this and that, and I shouldn't be here. And this person should have did that. And that person should have did this, this me, me, me. No, you're, you're being instructed. Chastisement, chastening. See, and we all should be dead. But the Lord has given us a chance through what? Chastening, through rebuke. All right. To to what? Choose life. To train children. To be instructed, taught, learn, chastise. Chastened by afflicted evils and calamities. All right. And again, we're all being tempted so that we can be what? So that the elect can be proven. So the Lord is putting us all in these positions and those who are chosen to endure to the end are going to endure through the Lord putting the spirit on you. But you have to what you yourself. All right. You have to choose life. Choose life. Look at what death is doing all throughout the planet Earth. So why choose that after all that we've learned and all that we see? Take the, the, the correction, take the molding. All right. Those who are molding the character of others by, by reproof and, you know, admon admonition. All right, let's look up this word admonition. Okay, and we're all in positions where we 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 uh, are going through this, and each of us have our own measure, our own way, our own story. Come on, dog. Come on, man. The act of action of admonishing, a third of counsel or warning. All right rebuke reproof all right and we all get rebuked in our own little way but it's good all right because through that we can learn all right the ways of righteousness man we can apply choosing life which is a sacrifice when it talks about making your bodies a living sacrifice this is an aspect of it all right that you have to understand as well as an israelite but no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. Going through it is not joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, all right, because it don't last forever. <laughs> the Lord ain't just bring us here to to you know lead us to death. It yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, let's read this in the NLT. All right. No discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It is painful. <laughs> but afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. See, and we're all going through a training process. The sons of God. OK. And, and, and daughters as well. Because just because you're a woman, you you gonna have to go through some. You gonna have to change. You gonna have to. Uh, 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 you gonna be put in situations where you're gonna have to choose life, as well. Okay. <laughs> Especially if you say you believe, right? It says, "Wherefore lift up the heads which hang down and the feeble knees." See, get your ass up. All right. And make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Let's see here, right here. Let's read that in the NLT. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall, but become strong. All right. And you always want to, want to be an example. All right. Of endurance. All right. Of, 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 of a soldier for your Hawabashi Miyawashai. All right, because many of us, all right, you know, many people who you see now in the truth, these tribulations that are coming down the pipe and the things that they're going to be challenged with. All right, many, hey, you know, we, you don't want to see it, but some are going to be like, this. I didn't sign up for this. Okay, so we all have to prepare. We have to get our minds right. All right, because through these things we go through, the Lord is going to reward us, man. And he's been showing us more and more things all right in 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 the spirit man through all of these tribulations there's so much more we're seeing and so much more understanding we've been open to do you all have to take joy in what you're learning the teachers that he sent you man that has given you the understanding all right through the spirit and power of you how about shimmy through the holy spirit the lord said he will send you pastors according to his heart 
Yahweh Shai said he tells his friends his secrets. See? So the Lord is sending you Yahweh Shai's friends, okay, to feed you with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding as a guide, as a help to get through the hell as well. You see? And you have to look to the examples we have written in the Holy Scriptures, man. The things that are written aforetime were written for our learning. See? It says, I'm going to jump to verse 15, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of the power, the Most High God, Yahweh. All right. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, thereby many be defiled. See? Bitterness. Bitterness can trouble you in that you can be defiled. Okay? And this is a bitter experience. This is America. This is that bitter captivity. This is that spiritual Egypt, man. But in it, the Lord has rose us to life and in it. All right. We choose life to the best of our ability. All right. But we're in the times where, man, that that's the only way to go. All right. Um, let's get Hebrews 13 and five. Let your conversation be without covetousness. OK. And be content with such things as you have. For he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. We have to believe these things. So that we may boldly say the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. See, so the, the, hey, we, may, we have to boldly say this. All right. As we're in these situations that the Lord is our helper and we have to boldly choose life. OK. Um, let's see. Do I have anything here? Yep. Hebrews 10 and 35 cast not away. Therefore, your confidence with have which have great recompense of reward for ye have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise for yet a little while. And he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now, the just shall live by faith. See, the just shall live by faith, which he's quoting Habakkuk. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. All right. But of them that believe to the saving of the soul. OK, so ultimately choose life. All right. As we uh, were, were going into. What's that? Deuteronomy 30. <laughs> so many scriptures came out. Let me just get it. <laughs> Just type it, huh? Deuteronomy 30. All right. And, uh, 19. All right. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. The Lord has showed us life and he's showing us all of this death blessing and cursing he's showing you the results of disobedience now through the holy spirit of promise you understand all right what's 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 coming through obedience therefore choose life all right that both thou and thy seed may live see let me see if there's any precepts to this all right let's see here choose life Psalms 119 and 30 I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. Verse 11 in Psalms 119. Thy testimonies have I taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my mind. All right. Verse 17 in that chapter. Let all thy hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. Proverbs 1 and 29. For they that hated knowledge did choose and did not. For they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. All right. Proverbs 8 and 36. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. And they that hate me love death. See. And it keeps going. But, you know, uh, that's that's it. You know, the, the um, let's see here. The fear of the Lord. <clears throat> We have to walk with fear. All right. Sirach 1 and 21, the fear of the Lord driveth away sins. And that's the beginning of wisdom. And where it is present, it turneth away wrath. 
See? So again, you want to let wisdom meet you in all of your thoughts so that you you can uh, uh, ultimately choose life. See? And that's all that all starts with the fear of the Lord, knowing and understanding that man, <laughs> look at the result of disobedience. I don't want to partake in this world. I don't want to partake in, in, in death anymore. We see where it leads. Look at Diddy. Look at all of these people that chose death. Look at what they're a part of. You know, choose life. All right. Because it comes with way, way more. All right. However. All right. It will come with a challenge. It will come with chastening. It will come with a lesson. Take the lesson. All right. As the scriptures say, wisdom will try you. See, but as the, as it says, be not ashamed. Oh boy. I believe it's wisdom of Solomon. The let's see here. Concerneth. Let's see here. Maybe Sirach. Hold up. Yep, Sirach 4. That's what I'm talking about. Sirach 4. And we'll we'll leave off here. Um, four, Sirach 4 and 16. If a man commit himself unto her, he shall inherit her and his generation shall hold her in, her, in possessions. At first, she, wisdom, will walk with him by crooked ways and bring fear and dread on him. And some of us are in those situations, have been through those situations, and situations are coming. What's going to bring fear and dread and torment him with her discipline? Understand all of these things are discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. Put you in a situation where you have to choose life because the law, all right, is really ultimately the order, all right, of walking in the spirit, doing what's right. OK, then. All right. Will she return the straight way unto him and comfort him and show him her secrets? See. But if he go wrong. All right. Which this process goes from glory to glory. All right. We've received the secrets of the understanding through sticking in the path, you know, fighting demons, you know, which we fall. All right. But again, we're, this is a process of discipline. All right. But then eventually we're going to be comforted with salvation, man. But if he go wrong, she will forsake him and give him over to his own ruin. Observe the opportunity. All right. If you choose death, you're going to be given over to your own ruin. Observe the opportunity and beware of evil and be not ashamed when it concerneth thy soul. For there is a shame that bringeth sin and there is a shame which bringeth glory, glory and grace. So don't be ashamed when you're put in a situation. All right. Where you, you have to choose life, all right? Because it ain't going to look good. You may look crazy to others that you're, you know, walking by faith and not by sight and you're not reacting how they think you should react or whatever it may be. Don't be ashamed. Choose life, all right? And ultimately, all right, uh, you won't be given over to your own ruin. So hopefully I'll edify. I just wanted to go through that. Shalom.